everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, delighted to be having a second chat with Carissa, Carissa Grant of Worthy Chaos Comics. Carissa, thank you for jumping in and joining. Uh, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I had a great time last time, so I figured I'd try it again. <laughs> awesome, awesome, absolutely. Well, uh, as I was mentioning, the last time you shared this wonderful sort of animation of uh, Anubis sort of crawling onto the uh, um, screen and everything, which I thought added, it added a nice uh, worthy chaos appeal to the episode as well. Nice. I have a, I have a new animation. Um, actually, it's the, my cover uh, is animated. Oh, very nice. I'll have, to, I'll have to send it to you after uh, after this. But um, yeah, someone animated the cover for me and did a fantastic job. I was very, very impressed with it. And I didn't pay a lot for it. So I actually feel guilty for it now. But, you know, <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't remember what issue were we on last time or. Oh, goodness. it's It's been a minute. I know oh. you've written like <laughs> several. I know that you have uh, a vision for a multi-volume uh, arc. But, oh, my uh, was it Was it issue... No, it's one and two. Issue six. So it's yes, issue I think I think so. Yeah. So now we're uh this is the we've we've done this is the second hardcover since then. So we wow. had a first hardcover, um, that's issues one through seven. Um, that was launched uh last October. Mm-hmm. And now this is the next hardcover for eight through twelve. Wow. Um, <laughs> How time flies. How time flies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's doubled since then. Uh, we actually have finished um, 17. We're, you know, on issue 17 made. Um, so we're we're farther than that. But uh, se- uh, Kickstarter wise, uh, the hardcover is um, October 14 through, I think, three weeks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, the wow. fir- November, November 1st. Yeah. So October 14 through uh, November 1st. Um, it'll be for the hardcover issues 8 through 12. Um, and I actually have three Kickstarters in pre-launch right now. Um, Mm -hmm. so, um, if anyone wants to find any of them, you just have to search Worthy Chaos on Kickstarter and three will pop up that are live, but there's like, um, 15 (laughs) total. Wow. Wow. Uh, and, and it hasn't even been almost two years. Halloween's my, my second year in comics. Um, but, uh, issue, um, well, eight through 12 hardcover is October 14th. Um, uh, issue 13 will be February 17th, but smack dab in the middle of that January 6th is our issue one for our, our Western supernatural. Nice. Um, nice. Love that pair up of genre. Yes, because I could have, you know, paid off debt and and all that but i decided to start a series instead so i thought that was more <laughs> intelligent than than paying off debt um but uh yeah so uh the western is a little bit different um than redemption uh where the chaos redemption is uh, more of a horror adventure you know silent hill resident evil um there's supernatural aspects but if i was to pick something i'd say you know action horror um the western is pretty much a supernatural quest Mm, Uh, mm -hmm. because for anyone that's seen supernatural you don't have to watch supernatural to um to to obviously to to read it but um there are journals that people can get on issue one or whatever and they can follow along with my character there's the same characters it's just in the wild west um and um you get to follow along and whatever they run into cryptid or monster wise, you get a page during the, the, the campaign. So like an issue one, they're going to uh, run into, or, or you'll see them in the background is uh Wendigo and Bigfoot will be there. Nice. Uh, nice. And then every issue, whatever cryptid is seen or she encounters, you'll get a free uh, page for it. As long as you, you know, um, pledge that Kickstarter or you could buy them in another Kickstarter. Um, but not only that, um, because I love cryptids so much, um, there's going to be at least two new plushies per Kickstarter. They're already being made. Um, so you can get a journal, you can get a plushie, and 
because that wasn't enough. And I am plushy queen. I am, you know, uh, queen of merch for a reason. Um, every Kickstarter will have an ingredient, uh, a jar you can get with an ingredient from whatever cryptid that was. Ethically sourced, no cryptid mm -hmm. was killed. Um, because in this story, I, yeah, I knew it's very important. Um, in this story, she's required to get all these ingredients while the cryptid is still alive so that it has the immortality um, component to it. So, um, but there's 20 jars that she has to find. Um, so there's 20 cryptids that have certain things. Like, for example, the Wendigo, you have to get a piece of the antler. For Bigfoot, you need a piece of the fur. Uh, for the Mothman, you need some of the powder because he's a moth. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and a fang from the werewolf, which will be fun to get while living. Um, but uh, yeah, so they get you get to go on this journey with the characters as they're they're doing you know going through this. But even though there's 20 of those, there's at least 30 cryptids. There'll be other cryptids around. Um, you know, certain things uh, will be seen in the background. We have ones that people probably haven't even heard of. Um, like um. For not a lot of people know this one because I didn't know about it until this. It's called a squonk. And all it does is sit in the woods and cry mm -hmm. because it's so ugly. Oh uh, wow. wow. <laughs> so I don't know the point of it. That's just it's just it's just there. Uh we also made up like 10 of them on our own. Um for anyone that's read Redemption, they'll know that our um our vampire, uh well, a chameleon vampire bat. Mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. plushy uh, the, the the cryptid will be in there uh we have a crow demon which is very obnoxious for my poor characters because they have to get a feather <laughs> but the feather has to come directly from the bird but every time you grab it it bursts into flames um so and then turns to ash so <laughs> so uh that's fun stuff there um but yeah so we have a lot of a lot of cool stuff so i've gotten so obsessed with the story now because we just started writing it i think like two months ago if even, and we already have 15 issues written. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. You, you are a productive person and also somebody that clearly does their homework. I've never heard of a squonk. So this is the, the thread is that it's emotionally draining, I guess, to, to sit and listen I, to this thing cry. It's like, oh my God, would you just. <laughs> yeah. So the funny thing about it is, so she has to get the tears from it. That's one of the ingredients. Um, and Draven, if anyone knows Draven, he's a demon descendant. Um, normally an assassin, and this is like a gang, you know, gangster. Um, but um, <laughs> but uh, the squonk, you know, wants to follow her around because, of course, Serafina, being an angel descendant, is super nice to it, which no one's ever nice to it because it's super ugly. Mm -hmm. um, she's nice to it. It causes it to stop crying. So Draven's like, oh, I guess we don't need it. So he pulls out the gun and it starts wailing. And she's like, okay, well, problem solved. Um, but he threatens to kill it throughout the series where she's like, he's so cute. You don't have to kill it. Um, so I did not mean for the squonk to be in it long term. But uh, after I realized the thing would obviously follow her around, it has now followed her around. And it has its <laughs> uses. You know, it has a couple of uses. Not, not many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it was so funny because I'm assuming somebody made this up, but I looked up for whatever reason I had it in my head. She was um, making breakfast and she was going to feed the squonk an egg. So I thought just for the hell of it, I'm going to see if anyone has what a squonk eats. And I'm sure it was a joke, but somebody <laughs> posted about how they don't eat meat. So I was like, well, I guess she'll be feeding it strawberries or whatever. Um, but I thought that was funny because I'm, I'm pretty sure no one actually knows what a squonk, uh, eats if there is a squonk. Um, but, uh, yeah, I liked, I liked the, I did a lot of research, like, um, we have different segments in the story so far. So like the first part will be about them finding the 20 ingredients and it's not one per issue. It's probably more like two or three per issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the second campaign, uh, or saga, there's, um, maybe the necromancers or the vampires um but there's a, also a saga later on um that's werewolves versus the dog man uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> i had researched the dog man and i did not know that they weren't evil per se uh they're territorial but they have this thing where they don't like unnatural things like, i got in a fight with someone yesterday over what's unnatural and what's not um but to me i also no offense to the werewolf people i don't think they're natural they're curses Mm -hmm. And my friend's like, well, magic is natural. It's like, but it's not 
if you're born a cryptid, you're a cryptid. But if, if I could see if it's once created, they would think it's unnatural. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the dogmen are not uh, do not like the werewolves. Um, so it's like a little a gang thing going on. Um, but they'll they'll have that. Uh, and of course, the necromancer is going to have the undead. We have a headless horseman, um, which is actually a joke because. So Jeremy Rampack, who does uh, this cover and this cover, mm-hmm. um, he is the you know he's worked on interiors and um, and covers for Marvel, DC, Blizzard, Capcom, all that fun stuff. Um, but he sent me when he sends me layouts, and he's smart because most 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 um, artists will send me like three or four you know layouts. He sends mm-hmm. me thirteen because he knows I'm gonna <laughs> fall in love with them, and he knows I'm gonna get more than one. And it get and it grows like it started with two and then it was three and then it was six and now the last one was thirteen so I'm like well so I posted it and everyone loved the headless horseman mm-hmm. so literally because of this we like well we should get necromancers and so now we're gonna have a necromancer so there's gonna be skeletons and zombies and of course the headless horseman um, and uh, we will be getting that layout and he's not cheap you know he's he's like the most expensive cover but I keep buying two at a time. <laughs> um, and he's like he's like the all knowing master of layouts like and nice. details details you have no idea so he sent me these layouts i picked and i like torturing him you know so i do like i combine <laughs> literally two of them so he technically did two covers in one uh it has the we have a dragon demon plant that we made up so that's in the background we have the wendigo on the side for anyone there's another wombus cat on the right side um and it's all attacking you know my characters on a horse um but he did there was a nice simple one which i've never done simple with him because he's a maniac in details and it's the vampires coming out of a door and my characters are on the outside and the only reason why i picked it is because there literally is a an episode uh an episode an issue where there's vampires behind a door that they have to get through or clotters we have we have clotters in ours um so i was like i will do this nice and simple so he sends me this Pro- progress yesterday and it's like the most detailed insane thing ever i was like listen i was being nice i was giving you a break from the details and you had to add all these details you have a zombie you have like this this demon thing coming out of the door you have all these vines coming out of the door um yeah he's crazy um he just can't use the but I don't want to hear it from him anymore when he's like, oh, you drive me crazy because um, you did this to yourself. And mm-hmm. I even told him, I was like, you send me these layouts. It is not my fault. Like you are, you you do it to yourself. Um, and then my colorist kills me. So they, they all want to kill me. Um, I think the last one with the uh, the dragon, the dragon plant, the wampus and the Wendigo, he said was his most complicated, but he's full of it because this, this was definitely the most complicated. I don't care what yeah. he says. This has got this has got my two characters shooting zombies in the front. Then you have the the hellhound and Anubis fighting giant salamanders, and then you have the demon and angel father fighting in in the sky in an uh you know and all this stuff. So how he doesn't think this is more detailed? He's he's crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, it's, it sounds like you certainly have the team. It sounds like, uh, and and since you have all of these issues and and two volumes since the last time we talked, it sounds like everyone is all in and, uh, as I said, very productive. Because they're all as crazy as me. Like we're crazy. Like passionate. It's passionate, right? Passionate. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that. That sounds better. Um, but like my whole team, so for the Western, we have a new artist, um, and he's phenomenal. He just sent me the first glimpse of the Wendigo, which is insane. Um, but every time somebody joins our team, you know, we, we've grown, obviously it started with me, my co-writer and my one artist, and now we have a colorist and the letter and, you know, all this stuff. Um, but, uh, they always wonder like, what's the breaks between issues? And I'm like, there's there's no breaks on this team. This is just, you just keep going. I'm already in debt. What's, what's another couple of grand. You just keep mm-hmm. going and we'll figure it out when we get there. Um, especially since I find that the hardcovers are very uh, at cons anyway, online, everything sells, but and cons hardcovers are the way to go. Mm-hmm. Like people love hardcovers. I mean, for the first time in uh, the Nashville one, I actually made profit. Like I was like, you know, I mean, I think I made like 600 bucks or something from there, or almost 600. Um, and I only sold like 
20. Like I didn't sell that many. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was so funny because I sold like 16 the first day. Um, and then it was like slow, but I was like, oh, I actually did much better than I thought I did. So nice, um, nice. um and one thing I didn't tell you before, um last month, I don't even know what month it is. Last month I was a my first guest at a con. Um, nice. Yeah, at a horror con. I had given her my my comic books last year and she wrote me and she said, I, I absolutely love them. I want you to be a guest. They paid for the table, the food, the Wi-Fi. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and they called me a celebrity guest, which I kept correcting them. I was like, I'm a guest. I'm no celebrity. <laughs> um, but I don't know if you've ever seen the Terrifier films, but there was like a yes. Terrifier. Yeah, they were all that was a reunion. There was like five of them or six of them. Um, which by the way, the <laughs> I, I told him he's either a serial killer or the best actor ever because the guy is like super nice. <laughs> um, and I was like, and he scared the hell out of me because I was in the green room. So I was like right behind him. So like I could walk up to anyone there. Um, so I was taking a picture and being a total fangirl and I send it to my co-writer who absolutely loves him. Mm. So I was sending it to her and he comes out so fast that I screamed <laughs> and then he made fun of me for the rest of the weekend. I was like, yeah, that, that fits. Um <laughs> That was a lot of fun. That was that was really good. And I was next to um, House of a Thousand Corpses. He played um, one of the killers, um, Rufus. I think it was Rufus. Um, and uh, he was I had never seen House of a Thousand Corpses. So my mm -hmm. I, which is horrible. I should lose my horror card. But and I was like, <laughs> everyone kept coming up to him like, this is like my favorite movie. And I was like, I have not seen your freaking movie. And he's like, well, now you have to. He's like, yeah, now I have to. So I literally went home and watched it. And I'm writing to my co-writer. I was like, this movie's pretty good. Have you seen it? She goes, I have the tapestry hanging on my wall. I was like, so, <laughs> yes. Uh, and he was super nice. He gave us, uh, he gave me a free autograph and gave my co-writer a free autograph, uh, which was really nice of him, which he did not have to do, obviously. Especially nice. my co-writer, which nice. wasn't even there. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was a tangent. But I was very, I was very thrilled to be a, to be a guest spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually, you were anticipating a question that I was going to ask because I know there's an online presence, but uh, was was the con then something that you uh, do you foresee yourself going to more and sharing the good news of worthy chaos that way? Um, actually, yes. Um, I got asked to be on a panel uh, in nice. Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um i they want the both days i'm only doing one because i can get there and back in one day but uh i don't want to get a hotel and all that fun stuff but my table is free so i'm gonna have my table there uh, that's november 23rd it's um the the east tennessee occult uh, expo um so that'd be really cool i'll have a table i have a panel i have no idea what i'm talking about um so that'd be fun you can hear me ramble for whatever amount of time they before they cut me off and say that they have to close or something i don't know um that'll be fun and then next year i don't think i'll be a guest um because it's my first time going but i'm gonna be at which i didn't even know was a thing so i'm learning as i go cryptid convention i did not know this was a thing nice, nice. Uh, it's in lexington uh kentucky um i'm super excited because i will obviously have tons of cryptid uh so that'll be yeah. next november um and I'm probably next December going to try to get a table at the Supernatural convention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If the hardcover's done, I'll do it. Because I really think that they would want the journals and the jars and everything. It is super expensive, though. A table is $600. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not including hotel or any of that stuff. Um, but I think like I think it might be worth it. Get a couple of readers. And I might not make the table back, but uh, they're pretty loyal fan base. So... Um, yeah. hopefully they'll like that i think they'll like the journal idea and to top it off i uh, i will be drawing the uh journal pages myself nice, um, nice. in the story seraphina is sketching them so i figured uh if she's gonna have to sketch them then i should have to sketch them so Absolutely. we'll see how those i used to be able to draw for a year of my life i don't <laughs> I, it's been 30 years now for one year of my life in like eighth grade I drew everything from the Crow graphic novel and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons manual. And they were awesome. Do not yeah. expect that again. But th <laughs> for one year, they were awesome. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you have a, a character, Draven. So you mentioned the Crow. Is there a, a fandom? Yeah, yeah. I, I also love the Crow. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. James Zabar um, is just a genius. So I love that. Uh, in yeah, he actually signed... 
he signed my he autographed my so he autographs his own stuff for free oh, that's very and nice his agent did not look happy about it. um <laughs> but this thing i've had it since 93 so wow. I didn't even told him, I was like, I've been trying to, actually, he's very sarcastic because I was like, I've been trying to get this autograph for 30 years. He's like, well, I'm glad I didn't die on you. I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, but he signed that for free. He signed, I'm not going to lie. I don't even know the name of it. He had another comic book and I just happened to find it for five bucks at a, at a, uh, um, at a comic book store. I was like, I'll have him sign this too. Yeah. Um, so he signed those two for free. And then it was really, I didn't have my hardcover yet, but so I didn't get him that signature, but I get, I wanted him to sign my issue ones so that I could have them. So I put two issue ones down and I had him sign while he was signing one. And when he got to the second one, he like kind of paused and he was like, was this for me? And I was like, yes. Of course it was. Of course it was. So I don't know if he read it, um, but knowing he took an issue one was, was awesome. Um nice. I do give my hardcovers away. I have one hardcover, which if it's ever stolen or lost, I'm going to cry red tears. But um, it has all the signatures of everyone that I get, like all the Supernatural cast is signing it. Oh, wow. So far. So Jensen Eccles, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Jared, P Jared Padalecki, they all have my hardcovers. Um, and uh, The Walking Dead, people have it. Daryl have it. Um, uh, Merle has it. Uh, Abraham um a lot of them have it so i have this 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 whole book so um there is one person nobody knows that draven was technically loosely based or inspired by um christian kane from the leverage oh okay um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so every every supernatural person that sees it sees the long hair and says it's sam even Jared Pelecki, when he went to go sign it, he goes wow i'm really buffing this and i was like <laughs> he was so excited and he's like, I can't tell, I can't wait to tell my wife how buff I am in this. Like he was so excited, I could not tell him that that yeah. wasn't him. Yeah. So, well, hopefully, um, hopefully he doesn't watch the show. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he does. I'm sorry, Jared, I didn't have time to tell you. Um, and uh, Jensen took it too, which was was great because they play the music really loud, so I didn't think that he would like be able to hear me. And he was signing my book, and I say the same thing every time. I have a copy for you. You don't have to take it. Don't feel obligated. He stares at it for like two seconds as it like gears are grinding and it's like, hell yeah, I want it. And then he took it. <laughs> nice, um, nice. And, uh, so that was nice. Um, but yeah, I, I love thinking that they have my book, even though they might never read it. It's kind of cool that they have it. Um, yeah. So I, I really like that. So, but Christian Kane, uh, the whole point of the story, um, there's a point, I swear. Um, I actually am hopefully going to see him in two weeks. He's going nice. to be in New Orleans. I am driving eight and a half hours to see him, technically nine hours to see him. Um, and I'm super excited about it. And with my luck, there'll be a hurricane. I can't go. So um, let's hope but, not. <laughs> but I'm hoping he can get his autograph and I'm hoping he'll take a copy. Uh, everyone's been really receptive, but I can just see him being the one person I want to take. And he's just like, I don't want that. Um, but I don't think he's like that. So yeah, we'll see. I think no. he'll at least speak it. <laughs> have you been to uh new orleans before no i'm terrified like oh. <laughs> I, I, everyone's been like telling me and i'm going by myself because my husband's uh does not like car rides. he would have he had a man crush on him so he would have he would have flown to london but driving nine hours no <laughs> he doesn't want to do that get a good yeah. book on tape you know yeah or, you know i'm telling you such a pain um but yeah so uh i <laughs> I posted online, like, what are the do's and don'ts of New Orleans? And they were like, every other block is awful. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so I have to start on a good block, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm only there for three days, I think. I'm hoping they do meet and greets because I would love to have a meet and greet with him. Yeah. Um, but yeah. so far, I'm getting an autograph, uh, a photo, and his concert on Saturday. So. Nice. The other thing I'm annoyed about is I bought these tickets at the second they went on sale. Like there was no, there was no question in my mind. I was finding a way to get there. Um, but I bought these tickets and then, you know, the, the uh, entrance is like way later, you know, like mm -hmm. weeks when it came out, there was a better seat and it includes the autograph and the tickets to the concert. I'm like, I already <laughs> bought those. Like, why would you do that? So I was right. like, anyway, that was a tangent. So, but anyway. <laughs> I'm just imagining because you know that 
and rice, of course, New Orleans and, you know, the, the inspiration that comes there. I'm hoping that it's this uh, inspirational sort of trip for you to take in some Southern Gothic and, you know, who knows <laughs> what I direction. More, I need more issues to write. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I should be going like now I'm going to go there and it's going to be like, oh, yeah, maybe I should uh, write more. I need like I need another story. Like I need another hole in my head. This Western came out of nowhere. It was, you know, and it's the funny thing is, I didn't realize this when we were writing this. It occurred to me like literally three days ago. There's a um an issue, I think it's six, six or seven, pretty sure it's seven, where they're driving in the car and Raven's like, okay, so what else is out there? Is there Bigfoot? And she's like, no Bigfoot that I know of. And now I realize we're writing Bigfoot. So um I guess there is a Bigfoot. Um, but I've always loved cryptids and, and all that stuff. And, and, and I just never thought about writing it. And then my co-writer was like, we should write a Western. And I was like, we should write a Western. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, so now we're writing a damn Western. No. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah. I've never been to New Orleans, but I know that like, I'm just picturing the kind of inspiration that you can have from like the Southern cemetery kind of vibe, because I have been to Savannah, you know, yeah. Did you know that? There's a museum. Someone told me yesterday there's a museum of the dead. So I am going to look ah, that. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. I, I do miniatures. So I actually right next to me, which you can't see, is a miniature asylum from 1920s. It's a replica. Cool. But in the basement, there's a there's a morgue where they're autopsying a zombie. So that's where yeah. my mind goes. Um, but there's working. There's not working, but the drawers open. There's a morgue freezer that's from the 1920s and all that stuff. So um Anyway, there's, I, I'm trying to think of where it was. There's a, I think it's Maryland. There's a crime museum with the miniatures, uh, death scenes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they used to use to, and I guess they still use it, but they used to majorly use it to uh, have students train on oh, them. Wow. Like they're real stuff. But like, I would love to see that, but it's very hard to get in or I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to check out the death museum and see how that goes. And I, I know, I don't think it's there, but there's something else called, um, I'm going to say this wrong because I'm just like, I'm going to use that as an excuse, but it's like M-U-N-D-E-R or something, Mulder, Mulder something museum that has really um, weird scientific anatomies or something that like mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. weird scientific things that have gone wrong. And I need to find out where that is because that is right up my alley. <laughs> Can I just point out also as a reading person that I love, you mentioned that you're dyslexic, but you do all this writing and creating. I love that. I'm just sending appreciation for that as well. Yeah, that's actually what this whole thing started. Uh, when I started role playing, you know, I, I didn't really know how to write really well. Um, and I used to do like one liners when I wrote. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of I remember it was two years of one liners, then two years of para. And then I don't remember how long it was multi para. And then I was like, I remember telling myself, there's no way I'm ever going to do Novelier. There's no way. There's too much writing. I don't even know what they're doing in there. And now I sit down. I think the other day I did like a thousand words in one sitting. So nice. Nice. I got That's a awesome. little bit better. Um, so there is there is that. Um, I'm still, and everyone gets mad at me when I say this. I'm a horrible writer. I don't think I'm very good. <laughs> but, but I'm an amazing storyteller. And I used to say, what a wasted talent that I actually can tell these really amazing stories. And then comic books popped in my head. And I was like, this is perfect. Uh, fortunately, I'm good at writing dialogue. Because <laughs> that's all anyone ever has to see. Um, but uh, it worked out really well. But everyone's like, why don't you release them as novels? Because I haven't written as novels. You know, we have mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 15 novels finished, I think. Uh, and they're all like 100 to 150,000 words. These are not smalls. And I was like, because they suck if you just read them straight on. Like, they're horrible. Now, my co-writer is amazing. She doesn't believe me. She won't admit it. She's amazing. Um, I am not. I write very simple, but I write these amazing stories and these amazing ideas that even she has no idea where they came from. I don't know where they come from. Um, it's probably best I don't know. My friend at lunch the other day is like, I think you're ADHD and she could help. I was like, it's working for me. So <laughs> I think so. I'm not messing with this. So yeah. Yeah. it's working for me. <laughs> well, uh, I think we have time for one more question. But before we do that, I just want to say now you're making me think about the differences between being a writer and a storyteller, because I bet you there are people out there that would consider themselves writers, 
but are they good storytellers? <laughs> mm, that's a, that's a question for another episode. Yeah, um, <laughs> say that Stephen King, like I don't, I don't particularly like Stephen King's writing, mm -hmm. um, but I do like his stories. I think I liked Misery, but I tried reading it, and it was like all over the place. Um, so he's obviously a better writer than I am, but I think he's a major storyteller too. Like I think his strong point is is he's got stories, you know, and I think yeah. that's that's what I've got. I've got sir, but he's he's a better writer than me. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> but I think he's a a great storyteller compared to, to compared to his writing. But I've heard I, I've heard I, I enjoy him. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um so the that question is if i want to find out more about your work if i want to support one of the three kickstarters or one of the many many on the way because <laughs> i know you have uh a compendium to complete and as you should um <laughs> is there a particular place on social media that i can go a website or, or anything um, like that yeah. so there's both so uh i'm uh Carissa grant on um facebook anyone can find me it's open to the public we also have a Worthy Chaos group and a Worthy Chaos uh, business page. You can find me on all three of those. If you just search Worthy Chaos on Facebook, we pop up. Um, if you search Worthy Chaos on Kickstarters, there is always, I repeat, always something either live or in pre-launch. Mm -hmm. I already have the next seven approved, so they are always there. Because nice. I didn't have one at the end of two campaigns ago. Usually I have it the second mine ends, the new link is up for the new pre-launch. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it because kickstarted it approve it people flipped out like i don't know <laughs> i'm i'm proud that they're they either train me really well or i train them really well um but uh yeah i i didn't have the i didn't have a link so they they freaked out and then when i finally got it there was like 80 people signed up in like 24 hours um so now they're all approved so there's always going to be something live or in pre-launch so always search worthy chaos and there we are uh i also have a website worthy chaos uh comics.com um, I don't update it. I am a horrible, horrible person. Um, but they do have the hardcover the one on there. They have the plushies for Anubis and his girlfriend. Oh, love it, love it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, they'll they'll be uh, cryptid uh, plushies on there probably. And I'll put the hardcover up there when I I have to, all the time in the world. It's laziness when I when I get a chance to and memory wise when I get a chance to remember. Um, but just search Worthy Chaos, even Worthy Chaos on Google. It finds me, you know, so I'm wherever chaos is, is what is what it is. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're you're starting to do conventions, glad to share about what you're creating and uh, always glad to have you back anytime as you're talking about the mini volumes to come. Oh, and if anyone's ever in Nashville, uh, I always attend the Nashville Con in June. It's usually the first weekend in June. Uh, it'll be my third time next year. Um, I do really well there and people find me and remember me. And nice. I'm really surprised, but they find me for more. And um, that's always a, a plus. I, you know, I don't remember anyone I met three hours ago, but it's nice when, you know, people talk about it and then I kind of remember where they are. So you can find me in Nashville and, and everything like that. So, yeah, it's the best place. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Well, wishing you well in the creativity. And yeah. uh, we shall. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We shall talk again soon. Perfect. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you.